Hello. I cannot wait to share with you the exciting, 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 exciting news. News that so many of y'all have been waiting for, but Delta Air Lines is going to be accepting flight attendant applications this year week. So today is Saturday, the 15th of January, 2022. So this week, this week, sometime this week, sooner rather than later, um, Delta Airlines will be accepting flight attendant applications. And um, this is really, really exciting because they usually don't accept applications this early in the year. They're usually wrapping up from, you know, they just accepted applications in August of 2021 and um, have been bringing back people that had job offers pre-pandemic. And now they are already ready within just a few months of the last time they accepted applications to accept more flight attendant applications. And the reason that they're ready to um, hire flight attendants, more flight attendants, is because they are getting ready to grow. Um, they're getting, they're just, you know, they just, they're going to keep climbing, I think is the way they would say that. And in this case, that means they're going to be uh, expanding to new destinations, new routes. I can't wait to see what their new destinations are. That's always really exciting when an airline goes into a new place. Um, so that's why they are hiring flight attendants again. So quickly on the heels of the last time that they accepted applications, it's because of growth. Um, airlines hire for two reasons, either growth or attrition. Um, growth means they're expanding and they're actually adding to their workforce. Uh, attrition, when they hire because of attrition, that means that they have um, had some turnover or some churn in their, uh, in their work group. So uh, most recently, we've been seeing a lot of hiring with the mainline carriers due to attrition that resulted in people either they're not returning after furlough or um, which Delta didn't furlough, but uh, people was <laughs> coming back, not coming back after leave or furlough or people who took buyouts. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, they took early retirements. And now that aviation is back up and running, there was some attrition from that. So a lot of the airlines were actually just filling spots, um, even, but they weren't growing. But Delta has announced that this hiring coming up this week is going to be because of growth, which is really exciting. That's just really, really exciting. Um, it's always nice. Healthy things grow, right? Plants, children, airlines. Uh, so that's super exciting. Um, I've got notes here because I want to make sure I go over all the different things that I want to tell you. Um, they're okay. So this year they are they're going to be hiring. They're estimating about fifteen hundred flight attendants, um, and that's in addition to the flight attendants that they put through training last year and are scheduled to go to training you know, like this month, next month that already received their job offers last year. So it's another 1500, which brings their total from 2020 to 2022 to over 4,500 new Delta Airlines flight attendants. There have been some years where we have been excited when they were going to hire 250 flight attendants. Like I could remember that. I can remember one year they increased it from like 500 to 750 was their estimation. It was, that was within the last, well, since I've been doing this. So within the last eight years, but, uh, that, and that was like, holy cow, so much opportunity. And this year, 1500, which brings their total to 4,500. So cool. Um, so if you are able to apply again and you have not been successful in the past, um, you are not alone. There are lots and lots and lots of people who are um, not successful uh, the first time that they interview with Delta or the second even. And there are so many people that I can even think of that I know of that people that you'll even meet during the recruiting process that it took them multiple times before they were able to um, polish themselves to the level that Delta was looking for. And now they've had successful careers and have some responsibility. And it was no reflection on uh, how many times it took them to secure the job. So that's really exciting that hopefully that's encouraging if you haven't been successful in the past. Um, so I wanted to share that with you. And um, Delta is hiring 
I think this goes without saying, but they are hiring. This is going to be for English speakers. Uh, this is a non-load position, so or a non-LOD position. LOD stands for language of destination. So when an airline flies to a country, um, depending on um, how far away it is, depending on how many passengers uh, that are not native English speakers that they plan to carry, there's different requirements as to uh whether or not the flight attendants need, they need to have flight attendants on board that speak the language of the majority of their passengers. Why? For safety reasons, obviously, so that you can evacuate the plane in um, the language that your passengers understand. So a lot of times we see positions um, during slower times of hiring, we'll see positions that open that are for languages, different languages. And they actually are going to be hiring for some specific languages, um, Czech, Danish, Dutch, Greek, Hebrew, Italian, and Japanese. So those are going to be opening as well as the English only non-LOD, non-language of destination um, opening application job listing will be available. So um, you can take, you can decide which one sounds, if you're qualified, if you speak a second or a third language. Um, they're also, for these language of destination positions, they're looking for native or near native fluency. So it's not the kind of thing that like you were pretty good at it and you want to just maybe take some uh, extra classes to like get to that level this week. Uh, that's not really what they're looking for. You will have to pass a language test. Don't apply for a job that you're not qualified for uh, language wise. So if you don't speak the languages at the native, almost native full fluency level, do not apply for them. It just slows down the recruiting process. It slows down human resources. And it's kind of not an integrity either, which is a big deal for Delta as well. Um, integrity, honesty, and integrity. So if you're not qualified for the job. Um, that being said, English is opening this this week, so you can apply to that one. Um, if you applied back in August, though, and you were unsuccessful, uh, you are you have this opening falls within your waiting period, so you're not able to reapply. Um, please don't reapply again because you're not you're not eligible to reapply yet. So please don't reapply again. It just slows down human resources. It doesn't reflect well on you. It's not a great example of following directions or having respect for the policies and procedures. Um, so if you applied in in, in August and you have been unsuccessful, um, gotten a thanks but no thanks at any part of the process, you're you're still in your um, you're still in your waiting period before you can reapply. So this will not be the listing that you can reapply to, but they're not going to hire 1,500 flight attendants from and get them fully completely trained and out online from this one job opening. So they will open again probably within the next couple months again. And I imagine that will be outside of your window and then you'll be able to reapply then. Okay. So um, let's see where I am in my notes. All right. <laughs> Stand by. All right. Great. So now let's talk about what you need to apply. Here's some information for what you need to apply and uh, some qualifications I think are important for you to know before you apply. First of all, you will need a resume this time when you apply. Um, a couple years ago, I think it was actually 2019, uh, Delta did, um, did something new and uh, unique. And they had an application that was just a couple pre, like uh, pre-qualifying questions and no resume, no no job history, no nothing. And they didn't accept a resume the whole process. You went through the whole thing just to sh just and all they knew about you was what you said in the in the interview, which was actually a pretty cool way to um, to interview people, especially for the flight attendant position, because it's not an it's not really an experience based um, job in the sense that they need to know what airplanes you've flown or how long you've been a flight attendant or anything like that. You don't need flight attendant experience. You just need life, customer service, safety, ex teamwork experience, all of those things. So those things are usually easier communicated anyways during an interview. So that was kind of interesting that they did it that way. Well, they're not doing it that way <laughs> anymore. 
even though I said it was cool. Um, so they are requesting a, a resume. So you do need to have your resume ready. Um, Delta, there may be a place for a cover letter. It's not necessary. A resume that is ready to go. Um, don't forget if you have the company's name, the airline's name in your cover letter or in your resume, Delta Airlines is three words. Delta Airlines. It's not Delta Airlines. Okay. They're the only one that break the word up, but you know, you're not going to get, they're not going to just kick you to the curb over that little technicality, but those little details, Delta's into little details. That's what take, that's what elevates service, right? Is little details, glass, napkins that face the correct way, clean linens, presentation, like those little details are the things that really elevate a service. So, um, Go ahead, and if you have the name Delta Airlines in your resume or your cover letter, go ahead and double check it. Make sure it's three words, okay? Um, you will, so you will need a resume. I'll, I have some videos on resumes for flight attendants. I will link them down in the description if you need help um, going either creating a new one or you want to watch a video about flight attendant resumes so you can tweak yours. Um, Another qualification that I wanted to let you know is that you need to be 21 by April 1st. Okay, so not 21 when you apply, not 21 by the time you attend to training. So you can be 20 years old today and your birthday could be in March or February or January and you can apply. So you, the requirement is you have to be 21 years old by April 1st. 2022. Okay. So if you're older than that, then you're good to go. <laughs> There's no cap on the top. Amazingly and awesome, which is not like amazingly in the way that I'm like surprised, but in the way that I'm grateful because there had been an age limit for flight attendants for a really, really long time. So it's really um, I'm just grateful every time <laughs> that I remember that there's, you know, especially now that I'm 40 and maybe want to go back to flying one day. There's no age limit, which is really, which is cool. All right. And then you'll also need a passport. So you need a passport that has a minimum of 28 months remaining when you report for training. Okay. So this one's a little different. And you need to have 28 months. That's over two years left on your passport by the time you report to training. So if you wanted to, if you think that you're going to be really close to that number in the next six months or so. So let's say you have like three years left or so on your resume, on your resume, on your passport, you may want to go ahead and get that thing renewed um, so that you will have it back and be completely cleared when you're ready for training um, because you don't need it to apply necessarily. Um, you don't need the 28 months on it to apply, but you need it before you can report to training. So if you they give you a training date and you show up and you have 23 months left on your on your passport, there's a good chance that they would send you home so that you can rectify that. So we don't want that to happen. All right. Now, this one is that. Oh, there's an also they have a on their website and I will link the I will link down below in the description. There is a link that will take you to the Delta website where they go over the interview process or the application process, the process to become a flight attendant, starting with your um, application, moving to the assessment, the live video interview, the face-to-face -face interview at Delta's World Headquarters in Atlanta, and then the CJO, the conditional job offer, background check, and then training, six weeks of training. So there's a little chart. Um, like I said, I'll link it down below, but um, it hasn't changed since the last round um, in August, it appears. So um, before that, 2019, there was an extra video interview in there, an on-demand video interview that's not in there anymore. So now it is, um, it's application assessment, live video interview. So a one-on-one, -on -one, like a Skype interview with a recruiter, and then the face-to-face -face that has been very similar for a long time. It's a full day meet and greet interview group activity kind of 
uh, day and then job offer and then training. So um, like I said, I'll link that below so that you can take a look at it. There is some frequently asked questions in there too about some of the different parts and, and a little explanation about them. Um, like I said, it's the same as it was kind of in August. So if you've been keeping up with it, um, then that it, it hasn't changed. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to tell you or I wanted to share with you is I was actually able to ask one um one someone from the hiring team um what what makes uh one candidate successful over another or what is the kind of thing that Delta is looking for, like that wow factor that, that they're looking for, what makes someone successful during the application process. And um, some of the things that she said certainly will help is being safety and service oriented. So safety and service oriented, notice safety is listed first. Safety and service oriented. They're looking for people who are problem solvers people who are collaborative. So that means they are great team players. Um, collaborative team player though is a little bit different than a go along to get along team player. Collaborative team players contribute and um, voice an opinion and they add to the team instead of just um, implementing or executing team protocols, if that kind of makes sense. So that's that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. That's kind of a little tip there. Collaborative um, means that you're really contributing to the problem or even the service or whatever situation you're in. Um, they're looking for people who are passionate and they're looking for people who have a joy for helping others, um, which is a really sweet way to think about customer service. So it's more than just customer service, which is a little bit transactional, um, which is why a lot of airlines have moved more towards the word hospitality. But the way that this recruiter explains it is she says a joy for helping others. And I love it when um, I think helping is such a good word because it could be anything from a service to um, someone who is uh, sick or having a medical emergency or, uh, you know, even escalated up to a full aircraft emergency. You're helping people <laughs> in all those different situations from baggage to evacuations. Um, so having a joy for helping people is, uh, is something else that they're kind of looking for. So if you are ready for Delta to open, um, get ready. <laughs> it's coming this week. So like I said, today's 15th. It's a Saturday of January. It's January 15th, 2022. So this week we will see applications open. Um, and oh, and it also said, um, I believe it's not on this paper, but I believe she told me that it's going to be open for a few weeks or a week or two. So it's not one of those uh, three hour openings or the four hour opening that backfired that we saw from um, another carrier. Uh, so sometimes, though, since we're talking about this, sometimes the Delta application, while it's open, will like open and close within hours. It will open and close and then open and then close and then open again, because sometimes everyone, you know, they get a quarter of a million applications a year or something like that, 250,000. So um, there's a huge rush sometimes right at the beginning when they first open applications. And so that can cause their system to kind of glitch a little bit. Uh, so if you see on Facebook or get an email from me that says they're open, go, go, go. And then you go and they're closed. You probably didn't miss it. It probably is just resting <laughs> for a moment. So refresh or come back, at, you know, in 10 minutes or however, but don't let it freak you out. You probably didn't miss it. Uh, she said that they expect it to be open for a week or two, um, which is exciting. All right. Good luck. Keep climbing. Get ready to rock the passport plum. I can't wait to see everyone's uh, training and graduation pictures from this hiring round. And I'll talk to you later.